Hey guys, welcome to IGN Live presents Mass Effect 3 spoiler cast. I'm joined by editor Dustin Legary. Hey. And by PlayStation editor and Up at Noon host Greg Miller. Be up! And uh, today we're going to talk about Mass Effect 3. We're going to talk about a bunch of different stuff. Uh, there's some kerfuffle on the internet about the ending. Has there been there? Uh, and, you know, it's been a little while since the game's come out. We've all been playing it. Uh, I think it's time for us to weigh in on a bunch of different topics. Yeah. Um, what we're basically going to do is talk about it. We're going to take questions from you. Please tweet us at IGN, hashtag any 3 uh, We're going to be giving away some stuff as well, too. we got some shirts. We're going to give away a hat and uh, some crazy N7 uh, jacket as well. Um, but just so you know... This is a spoiler cast, so please, 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 if you are concerned about hearing about whether it be the ending of the game or what happens to your favorite or most hated crew member or anything like that. We're talking about all that. Yeah, yeah. All, everything's on the table. We're going to be talking about uh, all of it, so please just know that going in. I believe that we're going to have a little note on the player at all times that says spoiler to, just in case you didn't hear any of that stuff. So uh, with that, let's, let's get going here. So, Mass Effect 3, the ending, what's all this hubbub about? Well, people are really upset because it's terrible. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. well. See, now, yeah, we talked about this a little bit before it went on, and I really think it comes down to you, your level of Mass Effect fandom. Like, Destin is a huge Mass Effect fan, crazy Mass Effect fan, and I'm a Mass Effect fan, period, right? Like, I enjoy the games. It, well, two, and now three. Yeah. One sucked. But <laughs> it, it's one of those things, when I one, finished one it, didn't suck. I was like, well, all right, you know, the ending, I was like, all right, no big deal, whatever. And then I talked to Poe, my friend, who's like super crazy Mass Effect fan. And he was like, have you watched the other endings? Read this article, blah, blah, blah. And it was pointing out the fact that, you know, for him as a fan, like there were all these questions that weren't answered that I didn't think that much about, right? Like I didn't think about, well, oh, they blew up a mass relay, which I know from yeah. Arrival kills everything in the world. Yeah, like when you start Mass Effect 3, you encounter these Batarians who are pretty much wiped out because one mass relay was destroyed. Well, every single ending in the game you destroy all the mass relays, yeah. I meaning you're obliterating entire races. You're basically killing more people than the Reapers would have. Ever. Or, yeah, or well. you, you could be, because yeah. the reason why the Batarians were all killed is because the mass relay was so close to their system. So, mm -hmm. um, with, you know, with the location of all the other mass relays, as you go through the galaxy and you go to all of them, you can see they're right next yeah. to plenty of other systems. So some of them uh, are gaseous, you know, giants or whatever they are. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm actually right here at the ending of the game, and I just want to point out that I'm with uh, Liara and Garrus, and I'm going right to the point that we're talking about where, you know, let's see what happens when you actually do this suicide run and play through the end portion. Of People the get smoked, run. apparently. Yeah. Now we're getting a lot of questions coming in here, uh, so please uh, tweet us at IGN, hashtag any 3 uh, again, this is a spoiler cast. We're going to be showing the whole ending. We're going to be talking about the different uh, endings that you can get or how different they are. We're also going to be talking about big things that, that happen over the course of the game that uh, we thought were cool or we thought were questionable, whether it be uh, having the ability to actually cure the genophage, um, making a decision for the future of Rannoch, whether you should uh, you know, support the Geth or support uh, the Quarians, all kinds of crazy stuff. So um, here we go. So here we are. Everybody's knocked so, down. Everybody's dead. From this point on, there's actually a great theory out there on the internet that I really like, and it's that Shepard is trying to be indoctrinated by the Reapers. Mm -hmm. Now, indoctrination has been covered in the novels. It's been covered in the game itself. If you go to the Codex, there's a uh, the guy does a whole reading about it. Yeah. And so, um, what is indoctrination? If you don't know, indoctrination is where the Reapers try and control your mind. They did it to Saren in the first game, and, and ends up, we find out in a second they did it to the Elusive Man here. Yeah, they did yeah, it yeah. to the Elusive Man, and um, people think they're doing it to Shepard here. I mean, look at this whole sequence. It's different. You have infinite ammo with your gun. There's a vignette around the whole thing, yeah. like like a like darkened edges, and a lot of people have hypothesized that. This isn't happening. This is all a battle in his head. Now, one of the reasons because there's four different endings in Mass Effect, mm -hmm. and I use different very loosely. It's basically choose your color of explosion. Yeah, yes. But in the ending of the one where you choose destruction, mm -hmm. which would be, there's only one choice that really destroys the Reapers and gets yes. rid of them forever. It's the destruction option. It's made out all of a sudden, though, that the entire game, that's been your goal. That's mm -hmm. been, I mean, the entire series, right, is to wipe out the weeper, Reapers. The Weavers. Yeah, weavers. <laughs> they are Weavers. And you're making these choices, and all of a sudden in that game, that's the renegade decision. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's clearly not supposed to be the cool one. But if you do it, it's the one ending, and you have, what is it, all the war assets, is it, or your Galactus readiness. Yeah. You get, at the very end, you wake up and take a breath. Yeah. You know, and, <gasps> yeah. and, like, that's really cool because something, you survive. That's the only way you can survive. But I was friends with the guest, so I killed the guest. I kill um, any world, any synthetic. Any synthetic, Edie. yeah, yeah. Edie's Edie dead, dies yeah, yeah. because of that. 
And that's really frustrating to me because, you know, I But that's the everybody. choice, right? I mean, that's, that's always been Mass Effect's thing is putting you into these really, really tough choices. Yeah. And that's the why you had to is, weigh every choice in this game. It's not even really a choice because any choice you make, the exact same thing happens. Your friends are still stranded, all the mass relays are still blowing up, and you get a color swap. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we think, right? If, if this is, is all in Shepard's head, it all it is indoctrination. Is and he d does the destruction route, which they, you know, the Reapers are telling him is the, oh, that's the renegade decision. You don't want to make that yeah. decision. But then he makes a decision, kills the Reapers. Maybe not all the information is true, right? Mm -hmm. Like, maybe the explosions we see aren't really happening. Maybe Edie is still alive. Maybe it only took out the Reapers, stuff like that. Yeah, it's just, it's very confusing in the way it's presented. Yeah. And that's why people are mad. They want closure to their characters, totally. you know, to their stories. Yeah, my argument for my friend who was so <clears throat> invested in it, right, was I was like, well, weren't the fact that every, like, you know, for Tally and for Garrus and for anybody to get them on my squad this time around, I pretty much closed their story, right? Like, Tally has that great moment where you guys, at least in my story, sit down on our planet, mm -hmm. she takes off her mask, it's like, everything's gonna be okay. And yeah. it's like, great, now we're gonna go do this thing where we take out everything. Yeah. And so I was like, doesn't that solve it all for you, you know, that that's the ending? And he was like, no, that's not the ending. That doesn't solve anything for me because then they're str she's still stranded somewhere, uh, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of this, if every mass relay is destructed. There's all these people orbiting Earth now that have no way to get home. Eat. Yeah, no way yeah. to eat, no way to get home. <laughs> also, we don't know what happened to your crew once you're storming the the Citadel beam. Yeah, like, that's so we yeah. just saw that they were with me right there. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the game, they're on the Normandy apparently. What? They just took Running off away and from left what? Shepherd? Yeah. Where, where's where's Joker everything. leading yeah, yeah. the Normandy away exactly, from? Exactly, right. So. Yeah, yeah. Somehow you figure that only you and Anderson got on to, into the ray. And then the two people who were with you got beamed off the planet during this whole fight into the Normandy that then yeah. got away somehow. Hey, Shepard's gone. Here's a running? shuttle. Okay, yeah, bye. Yeah. Like the Normandy's, yeah. why would the Normandy run when the Normandy's always there for you yeah. trying to so, do something? So we're getting a lot of questions in. Um, Jose Ole 5990 Good asks. Name, Jose Ole. Uh, and we're kind of talking a little bit about this, but uh, he says, IGN, if you needed to create a new ending, how would you envision it? Now, we're talking a little bit about this indoctrination <sighs> angle. Like, yeah. okay, give me the Watch elevator pitch. Like, like, two minutes. <laughs> how would you envision a new ending? Watch up at noon on Monday. No, yeah. <laughs> there, is a, there is a great ending bit there from Destiny. I mean, like... Well, I didn't write it. Yeah, 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 yeah but you, sorry, I'm yeah. giving you credit. Okay. Uh, that, that's the whole thing for me, is that I wouldn't want a new ending. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things where, for me, it's... Even though it wasn't great or satisfying or whatever, it's closed. And that's why I kind of don't like the deep breath thing. I like it when games end. I like, you know what I mean? And then maybe something happens. I mean... This isn't the infamous two spoiler cast, but infamous two has two endings that are very decidedly over. And so then it's like, well, let's see how how would they do three? I don't know, but it's something cool they could do. You know what I mean? But I mean, even if so, even if there is no indoctrination happening, if Shepard did take a breath and he's still alive, uh -huh. that doesn't mean that the story at this point isn't concluded because you know you've got you know Joker and your crew, whoever that is that survived, stuck yeah. on some other planet, and so Shepard took a breath. Doesn't that still signify some kind of conclusion? I mean, the the mass relays are destroyed, the Reapers are gone, or they've been. Uh, put off. Well, then, then I'm then I'm frustrated because I have so many more questions. If there, you know what I mean? Like, so we yeah. So all synthetics are destroyed, including everybody we just talked about. But somehow, jo Joker or they're synthesized. On this yeah, they become one. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah, like yeah. that either. That's weird. But anyway, another argument for the indoctrination theory is all these elements. They look like the Shadow Broker ship from some the Shadow Broker DLC from Mass mm -hmm. Effect Two. So maybe this is all stuff that he <laughs> remembers. They're you know, pulling. They're pulling from his, his internal memory. and internal yeah. backlog and then, of information. Like, how does Anderson beat him there? Yeah, you know? exactly. That was a really weird thing too. Yeah. But he. So the, the, why is Anderson even there? Here's here's you know, the there's big. There's only one way up. Here's the problem, Destin. As a huge Mass Effect fan, you're disappointed in this ending. If they say, "All right, everybody, we, you know, there was more to this story. The deep breath meant something. Here's a fifteen dollars DLC that explains it. What are you gonna? Are you gonna be happy with that? Well, let, let me talk about how I feel about the ending. I didn't really give my. Two and cents. we don't. And just to be clear, we don't know if it'll be fifteen dollars. It could be. Oh right, free, right. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah no. Well, if we, it was we free, don't even, If it was free, I would have no problem with it. And we don't even know what, what it is. I still have a problem with it. Right. What about the people who don't have online, who can't get that ending? <laughs> well, it's who time to get off your Amish farm and join us here in the internet. Okay, guys, keep in mind we're still going to be taking questions. We're going to be giving away some stuff here. This is IGN Live presents Mass Effect Three spoiler cast. Tweet us at IGN hashtag me three. Um, so what's happening here? We, we're, we're now uh, up in the Citadel and all of a sudden, um, and it's actually not the Citadel anymore, it's the Crucible, and we're talking with an indoctrinated well, they're connected. They're together. Well, yes, but it's not just as good. So oh. some people Can are saying... Can you turn saying, on subtitles? Can you do I that guess. in the middle of this thing? No, I don't think I can. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Just so thought some, ahead, Caleb Lawson. <laughs> some people think that the elusive man is the indoctrinated side of Shepard's brain and that Control Anderson me. is your unindoctrinated part of the sign. And this is actually reaper. a battle going on in your mind oh. and they're representing Have the two factions of your brain. And like, now, when you Sopranos, the ending of that, it goes to black. And some people hated it, some people yeah, loved it. And what I loved about it mostly is that it spurned discussion just like this did. Yeah. Unfortunately, people like really wanted it changed or altered or a supplement to be added. And that's one reason I don't know if I want that from Bioware because look at the discussions, the fanfare that's come out of this. It's been amazing and I love having those conversations with other fans of the game. That's true, that, that is the good thing about it. And the thing is like talking to you and talking to Poe or talking to anybody about the indoctrination theory and what it all means, I love the idea of that, but I wanted to get, I wanted to take the breath and know that that was, was what was happening. Yeah. I don't want to take the breath or and now argue together for six months until we get a piece of DLC that may or may not, in, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're gonna give away our first uh, giveaway, which is a T-shirt. Do we have those up here? Oh, here they are, right here. Yeah. Dip, dip, dip. So here is a. Oh, that's that's, that's Shepard. Commander Shepard. <laughs> uh, Mass Effect Three T-shirt. This is gonna go to. Juan Jose Wilches, I guess? I'm sorry if I'm slotting your name. He says, did the ending controversy, not the ending itself, ruin the experience? Wasn't DLC supposed to expand or add closure to the story? The, the ending for me, it was kind of a letdown to see how fans reacted and like, like we demand, we're, we're fighting to take back Mass Effect. From who? The people who made it for you? Yeah. You know, like, I, I just don't like the whole phrasing, the way the, way the campaign's totally. phrased. Like, expressing your dislike of the ending and having these discussions, I love that aspect of it. And like, but like, demanding, making demands from the people who gave us this amazing product, you know? Yeah. Now, like, now, because one hour of it's bad, you know? Or it didn't end the way you wanted to. Yeah. Now, yeah. on the other hand, um, would fans have rejoiced if uh, a similar sort of uh, criticism, criticism had been leveled at the prequels for Star Wars and George Lucas would have come out and said, you know what, you're right, I totally blew it. We're getting rid of Jar Jar Binks. We're gonna change things with Anakin, so on and so no, forth. he just adds more stuff. Like, <laughs> well, okay, yeah, yeah, but, but it's yeah. just, it's interesting. I mean, I, I think that the response has been similar. Like, um, and it, to, to this specific question, actually, uh, Destin and myself, and I, I don't know if when you actually played it, Greg, but we played the game and we got the endings before the the controversy came out. So we were sort of playing it. Um, I don't know before all of that yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. How did I mean? Did the ending itself ruin the game? Like, did you feel like up until the ending, Mass Effect Three was like yay, and then when you got to it, you're like, oh gosh. Honestly, it's been hard. Like normally, I play through these games on like insane and everything. It's been hard for me to go back, yeah. knowing that I'm working towards this. I've heard this that a lot. Confusing, <laughs> oh this, this confusing ending oh, that like, doesn't really make any sense. And if, if this isn't indoctrination, which fans have speculated, then it's just kind of like, eh. yeah. Like that's how I feel about it. It's just, uh, weak. Yeah. it's weak. To the question, I mean, I think in a way for me, it, it, it didn't ruin it, right? Mm -hmm. But it really sucks. It sucks so much that this is the conversation about it. Yeah. It isn't. Oh my God! Is it indoctrination? Is it this? What does yeah. it mean? Blah blah blah. It's they ruined this ending and they've ruined the franchise and I'm that and I'm and it's like ah, that's what I don't like about it because I did play it after this had already started. Okay. And that's okay. and like we were talking about it before we went on air, right? That so many people in the office haven't played it, and so now when people beat it, the first thing we say to them is, "What did you think? Of, what did are you were you right. let down by the ending? Are you upset? Yeah. Blah, blah blah. And so it's already one of those things where you walk in with that preconceived notion of, well, a lot of people are mad about this. I wonder why. And it was the same for me, right? Because I beat it and I was like. I didn't seem that bad, and I texted now, my friend. He's like, "Oh well, here's why it's wrong." Yeah, I'm like, oh, gotcha. Right, okay. Now let's let's uh, let's bring up Lost for a second. Um, for people who like Lost, there was a similar reaction. Um, there was a polarization. Some people just thought, "Hey, that was perfect." Uh, I liked how open ended it was, and I liked to be able to just sit here and talk. Well, what about this? What about this? What about yeah, this? Yeah. There were other people that felt like the the whole idea of what Lost was trying to do was present all of these crazy things and then kind of explain them as you go along, or at least that's what I think we felt like over the course of six seasons. Yeah, I hope so. Um, and then at the, yeah. yeah. And then at the very end, you're like, hey, I don't even know what the numbers mean. I, yeah, you know, yeah, all, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. all these different things that were unanswered. Um, do you guys feel like, uh, personally, like it's sort of the same thing and maybe that's the way that the fans are reacting? Or, I mean, did you guys watch Lost? Yeah, I did, I did. And like, I didn't watch the ending, but. Yeah, for me, I wasn't super disappointed in Lost and I think it's because I'm in the same vein as Mass Effect. Which I was like, this is a fun ride. And then I was like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. And like, because I cared about Jack and what happened to Jack. Okay, cool, Jack Shepard. 
But I think Mass Effect's a different story, and I think games are a different story. Like, you know what I mean? We talk about, like, I didn't like the ending of this movie, I didn't like the ending of this TV show. And then Mass Effect, you're like, I don't like the ending of Mass Effect. And it's a bigger deal because you've had three games of the same character, right? You know, the biggest thing in my life besides Portillo is trophies, and I want trophies <laughs> nonstop. And I st kept playing on 360 because I had my character, and I wanted to see how my relationship with Garrus panned out, and I wanted this, and like, you own these parts of these characters, right? And you you sit there and you agonize over these choices, especially in this yep. game. Mm -hmm. In three, I totally did sit there and put the controller down. I'm like, do I want to make the renegade choice here? Like, I'm a paragon, but the renegade choice makes a lot of sense. Yep. And so I think there's so much personal investment in it that when you do get here and you've made so many decisions and seen how they panned out, you make this final decision and you're like, well, what? Wait, what? Like, yeah. I, I think it's a bigger that's, blow. That's that's how I felt too. I make the decision. I'm like. Well, there must be a better choice or yeah, something. Yeah, right, 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 right. I go check them out. I'm just like, what? Yeah. You know. Now, also, they saved the world with the PlayStation Move. Heads up. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, so now you played a, a majority of the game as Paragon. Per oh yeah. Like, Was it all Paragon. the way through all three all three games? Well, I yeah, I did. yeah, from two on, I did. Okay. I got bored with one because it was a really boring game. Hey, okay. Oh right, no, I really one. liked one. One's still I, one of my favorites. Yeah, me too. Um, so and you played as a Paragon. Yeah. So no, well, well I, I did play through. Ren I did play through the first two Paragon and Renegade, but I lost my save, so I never got to see how the Renegade path choked. Gotcha. Panned out. Um, I played as a Renegade in one. In yeah. two, I felt like guilty, and so <laughs> yeah. so I kind of went through this reformation. I even put like my my character's face back together, and you look normal by the end. Uh, and then in three, it was pretty mixed. But you're yeah. right. You there were a lot of decisions, especially like when you were on uh, Rannoch, and you had to decide. Okay. Uh, do I support the Geth who all of a sudden we've learned all this insight that you know they were just defending themselves yeah, against yeah, what was yeah, going yeah. on with the Koreans? There's like or do three you support or four outcomes in that situation that some are major or dra majorly dramatic. Like for me, I supported the Geth because I was a huge fan of Legion and in, in, yeah. in two. Mm -hmm. And then I felt like it was right, and then my tally died. Like she really? did. Yeah, yeah, she just oh, wow. like she jumped off a cliff, and I'm like, oh no. She had really? I'm yes. Sorry, I curse uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't know that, and that's the best part about that, and that, that's why I'm so pissed off that people are focused on the ending and so dramatic. Because there was a part where when we're oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, the reason they're focusing on that is because they've been promised, and we did an interview with Casey Hudson where he said there will be wildly different conclusions based on the players' decisions in the first two chapters. That's completely false because we get a color swap. That's the wildly different. Well, no, but is he talking about specifically the ending? Right. Or are we talking about the ending yeah. of these characters? Because, wildly because, like, different like, conclusions. Like, put I mean, conclusions of the, the character threads, though. That's right, what right. I mean. but, but now put it this way. Okay, so for instance, in, in Mass Effect 1, I didn't kill Rex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I have no idea how that would play out with the whole Genophage storyline in 3, because in 3, we're obviously we're given an opportunity to, to cure the Genophage. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what would it have been like if I would have gone to. Um, what was it called? Tatanka or? Yeah, yeah. Tatanka. <laughs> Tatanka. <laughs> Tatanka. Um, if we went well, there and Rex wasn't the Primarch or whatever the, those, you know, uh, whatever they're called. Yeah. It's his brother um, Reeve. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, did, it's, did, you, it's like a did you kill Reeve? Did you guys kill yeah, Rex? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so it didn't matter. No, it That's really doesn't saying. matter. They just swap out, like, like Morden swapped out with some other Solarian, and I'm maybe sure you can't. You know, get the Morden thing, but you can still do pretty much the exact same stuff. So it really didn't have an effect. So Destin's I would have, I would have liked, just mad. No, I would have liked to see like <laughs> if, if you killed Rex, you don't get access to that content. He's dead. Yeah, they're screwed. Yeah, you know, you don't get access to the Solarian stuff. So if you kill everybody, you know, you should have had a totally different story. Instead, you just get a placeholder character instead. You yeah, know? I understand. It's it's similar with the Arachna, right? Like. Like I, Arachnite. What, I, what I, Arachnite. Arachnite. Like I said, I'm not some big Mass Effect nerd. I just enjoy the game. But like you know, so, since I started two, they in a, on a, started two on 360. Mm -hmm. They made choices for me. In, in mine, yeah. they wiped out the Arachnite, right? Because I guess that's the right choice. It's yeah. Arachnite. Arachnite. No A. Yeah. Well, I think they're spiders. All right, we're all yeah, aware of what this they're is. They're squishy. Little, yeah, I don't even know what they Anyways, are. So. Uh, in the, I, I was talking to Poe through text when he's like, "Let me know when you do this. Let me do it." Blah blah. blah. And so like. When I got to the part in this one where you you know the queen should be there if you if you didn't kill her right and she's like oh this is happening for mine it's like this mutated monster that's just like a made up like hybrid built thing and it's like all disgusting. Was she blue? Wake up. No, she was all like dripping black ooze and oh, she was like really? a slime monster. Oh, okay. And so like I was like oh yeah well I'm not gonna save you and <laughs> and she freaks out she's like children kill them all oh, wow. and I I get the hell out of there and I beat him and I text Poe and I, I and like we start talking. 
And it's clear we're not synced at all. And I had to call him, and he had to explain to me what I he did and what I I Lord. explained to what I did. And it was like, okay, so this decision from oh, one yeah. totally changed everything here because yeah. he was like, well, you know, at least they took it well when I said yeah. I wasn't going to save her. I'm like, what are you talking about? Mine yeah. was like they called everyone to kill me, and it's like, oh, okay. And here we go, ghost child. Yeah. So yeah. here here's another uh, point of contention. Um, a lot of people uh, were confused and really outraged by this, or just. I, I don't know. Like my my reaction to this was uh, a why was it human? Like like if this is technology that you know had been handed over millions of cycles. Well, it's like I don't contact know. with uh, you know yeah, what's Jody her Foster. name? Jodie Foster. Right. That's her dad at yeah. the end. Okay. The yeah. Okay. So was her dad. now like, really. So then the so then one of the answers is is it uh, you know an avatar that's being represented as a human because yeah. it's well, shepherd or was there sort of the forethought to know from this sentient race that uh, the Protheans or whoever it is that the avatar. Uh, or the um, the catalyst indeed would be a human and a shepherd. And see, he, and yeah, that's the confusing thing is that I don't think I think it's like Gozer. Whatever you imagine Gozer to be, Gozer will be. And I think that's what they're doing. But my because this is the kid that we saw die, and I don't think the kid was always on you know on Earth, and it was this thing. I think that Shepard's projecting out what he wants it to look like. And but I don't know how they're reading that, and I don't know is is then is this just indoctrination again? Like yeah. it, this is where the whole thing starts to do the whole like. Well, well, you could destroy us, but that's clearly the renegade choice, or you could let us all live with right. you. And like, uh, if you go into the codex, it says uh, they'll tr do play tricks on your mind, often appearing as godlike creatures. Mm -mm. So you know that's pretty much exactly what he is. So guys, uh, what do you think? What do you think this is all about? This kid, uh, all of this stuff that we're talking about. Tweet us at IGN uh, hashtag me three. We're going to be giving away uh, some more stuff here in a little bit. Um, Rob the Misfit asks, yeah. do you believe that Shepard is in fact the catalyst? Or was this just the, you know, just the wrong guy, he wandered up there, and that's just the, the dude that's standing here at the time? Hmm. Well, the kid at the end says that, like, obviously our way no longer works if you're standing here. So, he's, he's not the catalyst. I don't remember what the catalyst was. Yeah. Catalyst was what you had to put in the thing, right? <laughs> oh, so, so he is the thing that... Yeah. This. I don't know. I like the indoctrination theory, so... No. So, now, let, let's talk about this for a moment here. Um, one big problem I had. Now, to be clear, I didn't have necessarily all the same issues. Mm -hmm. the, the, the fact that all the ending cutscenes were essentially the same, or there were palette swaps, yeah. was weird to me. I would have loved to see something that was a little bit more akin to, say, the ending of Six Feet Under. Like, if you guys watched that series, it was an HBO series, and... Uh, at the conclusion, you got to essentially see a fast forward of all of the characters' lives, literally. Mm. To that would have felt a lot better to me. Just because well, yeah, so what many, you're just oh, what happened like, to you know what so, happened to the Rachni? What happened to Thessia that was being blown up? Yeah, and like but well, Rex. One did thing he that, have a baby? <laughs> <laughs> one thing, and yes, I, I'm sure he did because yeah. uh, uh, that's, it's, that's it was what on he the was way. going home to do. Yeah. But one thing that I had a huge issue for, or at least it felt like we. Uh, stepped out of this really rich fiction and back very clearly into gameplay was the idea that the Crucible was designed from the start, millions of cycles uh, ago, to have two giant buttons and one clearly blue, one clearly red, yeah. and you know to give people this sort of polarized choice. That to me just it it just took me out of that sort of disbelief. And to Bioware's credit, I think, up until this point, they had done such a great job sort of with that suspension of disbelief. Mm -hmm. But it's in those moments where all Here's of a sudden like, you're like, oh, yeah, well, well and yeah. you're like, oh, I've been playing as a Paragon, so clearly I should go over to the blue part. Yeah, or yeah. maybe it, I should go into the middle, I don't Speaking know. Speaking of that, notice who went which way. Anderson went red, and he's always been representative of, of good. And then the elusive man goes blue. Yeah. So, and those normally that's what, represent that's why And that's why I think Renegade. exactly. And that's why is I think it a trick. That's what. Yeah. And that's why yeah. I think it totally is. And I think the true ending is destruction in the in getting the breath. Yeah. Because I do think that the reapers are trying to trick you. I, it, the indoctrination stuff all makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And like, so then my only problem comes down to is playing a game that isn't complete. And I, that's and that sounds like a slide against Bioware. And I don't yeah. mean it to be. But I just mean incomplete in the way of like I wanted to choose destruction. And take a breath and have you know the reapers falling from the sky and someone telling me I did I, whatever you did you did you know it's like oh and then credits you know what I mean not like to be like this. Now there was a rumor going around that uh, Bioware actually had this plan from the start and the first piece of DLC was going to be free and it was going to be called the Truth and you figure out what actually happens. Now if that's true, perfect. That's good, but then it's then well, you I wait start, a second. You're all pissed well, off. Well, I know, people without but, the but then I started thinking about like, what about people without internet? They think this is the product that they get. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so they're stuck with this confusing ending. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm so, not gonna make a decision. I'm gonna look at the 
<laughs> I choose <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah. it be destroyed. What so, do you think now, little kid? <laughs> so Dalton uh, Northrup asks, don't you think the kid in the end is the kid that died from the beginning? Totally. Well, yeah, yeah, it's a representation. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. now we've already, as we've been talking, this indoctrination, playing tricks in your mind, this could just be pulled out of Shepard's psyche. He could be, he could be standing here physically on the crucible doing this and seeing that, or he could be in a dream state, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. could be happening, but yeah, Bioware and the story uh, foreshadowed this kid at the very beginning was killed in the ship, and then he keeps popping up with these, you know, these fever dream nightmares where he's running around in the woods and you have to run really slow like you're in Alan Wake or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, another theory is that, um, well, another point that somebody made was when you talk to the Rachni Queen, you killed her, so you might not have, yeah. she talks about being indoctrinated and how she saw... Um, inky-like versions of her people. And then when you have all those dream sequences, that's right, that's right, yeah. you see the same thing. And the queen mm, talks about good that. On. And that's like <laughs> what it was like being indoctrinated for her. And you're kind of going through that. See, and all this stuff know. is cool. Indoctrination in this storyline sounds cool. Yes. But I want the conclusion on the game. So well, yeah. wait a second. So yeah. what if what if we all are just lacking faith? What if Bioware has all of this? this Choose something too, by the way. This this oh. is <laughs> what what if, what if it is indoctrination? Yeah. And they're literally going to extend the story, or they're going to supplement the story, and they'd plan this entire time to do this. Then I mean, are we just uh, you know angry for no reason? Or well, no. Or, it, if that's the case, then two things have then two dramatic things have happened here. One, what what does it mean to make a video game anymore? And what it, well, I mean, what is it? What game? does it mean? What does it all mean, Casey? <laughs> you don't. But you understand what I'm saying. I mean, can we Bending live in an age will, where the you commenters? No, no, not not even that yet. Not. He's saying if it's been this, this was their plan all oh, along. Oh yeah. Then I mean, can you release a game and not have the, a real ending on it, or not? You know, you need to release a DLC that's the truth that is what you saw being the ending, but you didn't include it, so everybody who doesn't have internet gets it. Mm -hmm. And then two, the backlash. It's going to be the problem is that the kids who did the child's play charity and the kids who, and I say everybody kids if you don't listen to podcasts, sorry, if the uh, men and women who you know <laughs> bothered developers through Twitter and said really mean things to them, and if, if they these people who felt like they bullied them, and now there's this whole thing of then Bioware's going to say, here's this thing that we always are going to do, and the people who are like the really pushing this whole line, you know, us against Mass Effect, they're going to sit there and go, well, you know, uh, we t made them do this. This is a success for us, and Bioware's going to be like, no, this is our plan. They're going to be like, no. Mm -hmm. What? Okay, just talk, just, Caleb. It's, just it's talk cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm about to choose the best ending possible where we destroy the Reapers, but it also wipes out sentient life. Yeah, all right. So, so this is the one we think is the real ending. Yeah. If, if the indoctrination theory is right. Mm -hmm. Do you have the whole... Crazy built up bar to see the breath. Uh, I might have. I haven't played multiplayer in a while and okay. we're offline right now, so uh, we might okay. not get the breath, but we do have a video of it right. just in okay. case. Okay. There we go. Hopefully I get it. Yeah. So, guys, we're still taking your questions. Please tweet us at IGN, hashtag ME3. We're going to give away a t shirt here in a second. Um, while we watch this, um, or should we just let this run? Well, let's let this run because, like, there's a flood of questions that come up with this final scene and everything they show because they show the fleets having or maybe that was was that earlier well whatever there's still all these fleets are here and now the relays are about to blow up yeah, yeah. you know so they're stuck there's the pulse yeah yeah so the, the this is the red ending there's also a blue and green which are pretty much the exact yeah same imagine thing. these being blue or green you'll see there's yeah. different variations yeah. like you, the bad versions uh, you see big ben in london get destroyed yeah uh, one the entire earth just gets wiped out if you don't have That's your if you galactic do, like, readiness nothing. yeah 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 you just rush to the end mm -hmm. I had a few bugs with this where it was just like like this scene was just red and blue. Like those are the only colors. Well, I'm maybe like, it was 3D. Weird. Maybe it was old school yeah. 3D. <laughs> yeah. Supposed to get the 3D glasses yeah, yeah, yeah. out of the game. It's actually a combination. You got both endings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we couldn't pick. <laughs> so I like this one. It just, I just really hate it because like in my storyline, the, the Geth were helping the Quarians yeah. and like they were slowly introducing um, things in their suits so that they could build up immunity and eventually not need to wear their suits. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like they were working together to, you know, make better lives for each other. And I kill them all. With this <laughs> thing. It's like everyone's dead now. But again, maybe that's not really the, what happens. Yeah. Exactly. If you're waking up and taking this breath, maybe you never left Earth, and I don't know how you defeat the Reapers in your mind. But mm -hmm. I hope Bioware can come out because, like, they never said we're changing the ending or anything. Yeah. And maybe they've been just—it's uh, wishful thinking. But I hope they had this plan from the start. Yeah. It'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> It sure and you know, would. even if they didn't, and they decide to do something like this, and they say they did, we're cool with that too. Yeah, they have <laughs> they have an opportunity. They have a really big opportunity now to you know, 
feel better. So these are this is all the mass, all mass, mass relays relay. blowing up, which as we saw in the rival deal, um, kills a lot of people. Now this is this is because they're all near civilizations. They were a yeah. trap for people yeah. to build civilizations yep. around them. Yep. So so and this this is one of the moments that we were talking about that people uh, have been very vocal about. Why is Joker in Running. a in a mass relay stream? Why wouldn't he be in, right at Earth? What where is he running from? And why are why is your crew on the Normandy, um, as you see here in a second? How did they get there um, after you beamed up into the Citadel Crucible Citadel thing? So they were with me, and in the 15 minutes I was on the Citadel, they, mm. they, they were bailed. like, well, let's leave. See ya. They yeah. split, Dustin. That's why, it doesn't make, that's why it's a they got all out of there. mind. Yeah. The last two people he saw, he, put, he wants to make sure they're fine. They, and then you know. this just doesn't make sense to me. People talked about it coming full circle, and you're rebuilding life. So, like... In the synthesis ending, so Joker and Edie are rebuilding life? Yeah, right. Or Joker's with my romantic interest rebuilding life? <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's very strange. I thought they were going to do like some kind of Adam Eve thing here. When yeah, I was watching it, I was well, like... Well, that's what I think they're yeah. doing. They're kind of trying to show. And it's a cool sci-fi moment. I mean, just the look of it, uh, you know, seeing just a ship stranded with obviously alien technology on this crazy natural planet. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that, the first thing I thought when my crew... Well, I didn't even know who, who was going to come out because, yeah, you know, yeah. the first time you watch it and you play it, you don't know what's going on. Why, why is the Normandy here? Where is it? Who's on? And mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if it was going to be like the end of the suicide mission in 2 where whoever survived, survive. And yeah, I don't yeah. Know. And hey, then, Garris, then you see, buddy, oh, thanks Garris. for ditching me. All right, yeah, thanks. I'm sure Shepard's fine. <laughs> He's cool. Where are we? Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was mobile enough to get on the Normandy, but not to go into the Ray and come help you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. I followed you as far as I was going to follow. Now the Ray separate. could only let one person up. Oh wait, no, Anderson got up. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. I'm just kidding. So, uh, guys, uh, we're going to continue to uh, read your questions here and talk about it. We're going to be giving away some more stuff Awkward here in a second. Oh, um, oh, yeah, I know. Liara's there. Oh, there's yeah. Liara. We're going to be okay. <laughs> you ditched me too. Um, Thanks, Liara. <laughs> Uh, but tweet us at IGN, hashtag ME3. We're going to give away a t-shirt right now to Jeremy Lurie because he has a great point. He says exactly as far as uh, uh, the ending uh, being thought out this entire time or at least having a supplemental ending. He says, can we get the Fallout 3 style epilogue? Ron Perlman narrating is up to Bioware. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, oh, I did there get you, it, I did get it. So this is like the extra five seconds that you get that everybody was, uh, is kind of talking about. So this is considered the perfect ending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's pretty dark, but that's Shepard. Well, it's, it's not rubble. as dark for them watching yeah. it. It's for just yeah. for us here. And, yeah, and he and he moved. Yeah, and, yeah. and so like I haven't. You you I'm sure have gone over this frame by frame. That four seconds is that? Does it look like Earth or does it look like? Uh, it looks like right where you got hit with the laser blast and just rubble all around. Gotcha, you gotcha, 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 gotcha. That I mean that that like everything we I, that I think is the real ending. Mm -hmm. But then again, what? So then it was just him waking up from the dream that they crashed the thing into Earth Two or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, like I don't know. So anymore, let, so the, uh, this is did a they question. Did change it because that script was leaked? You know, like I yeah. said earlier, did they change it because of that? Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. So uh, Tim Bastian's asked. He says, if this isn't indoctrination, how do you expect uh, explain Shepard being alive at the end? Where is he? Like, so mm -hmm. where where is he right there? He's he's still on Earth. Well, he's, is he at the bottom uh, where where the the beam was originating from, or is he still up in space? I mean, we saw. Oh yeah, because the thing's way yeah, up there, and it ex right? well, mm -hmm. it exploded too. Mm -hmm. Didn't it just explode in that ending as well? It exploded in every other one. I forget. Well, it lets off the red thing, and then you're saying it explodes after that. Well, yeah, I mean, all the pieces kind of come apart, and you see fire uh, and everything. And okay. Maybe he did that quick, then jumped into Switch the same teleporter. Switch me over to the laptop. Let me, let me fool then around Then he jumped the into the same teleporter that Liara and uh, my buddy Garris did. <laughs> yeah, went exactly. Back down to Earth or and don't. Rubble. Fine. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. So, uh, so guys, uh, keep sending us your questions. Uh, they're they're looking really good. We're at IGN hashtag me three. Um, let's stop talking about the ending for a second. Let's just okay. talk about overall um, with the game. Like, what are some of the things that you really liked, and what are some of the things you didn't like? And if Bioware wants to tweet at us and tell us what's really going on, yeah. feel free. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're right Spoil here. Spoil it all right. We're right here, Casey. Um, so, Destin, what did you really like about the game, and what what? Did you, what could you have done without? Okay, another problem I had, and this is also near the end of the game. So this is the synthesis ending, by the way, that we're watching right now. Um, one other issue I had is I run into Jack, I run into all these other people. Mouse. Control F. Apple F. I'm just trying to bring up the thing. Is that what it is? Apple F? Yeah. yeah. Apple F. Full screen. Well, that's full screen, everyone. Is it? No? Yeah, <laughs> that's what you want. Well, I know. Crazy. Crazy Greg. But no. Hey, okay, so that's anyway, the thing I'm looking so for. there's all those people that you know you worked with throughout all the games. Yep. And uh, your crew. And then you're like, yeah, I'll talk to you later. 
And then at the end of the game, you it's get fun. this vid terminal, and that's the only time you revisit him. Like Grunt went through that really dramatic scene. Yep, yep. And like he comes out covered in blood, and I was worried about him. I was yeah, I didn't even know him. if he was alive. And, and then, then at he the comes end, out. I talked to him on a vid terminal, and that's my wrap up for that character. My wrap up for Jack, my love interest, is she's like. I want to get laid, so you know. <laughs> and I got sure I got that back. squad of guys out there covering yeah. your ass, you yeah, know, with their. Wait, what happened power. with Jack? I didn't, I, she wasn't my love interest. So you... oh, okay, she was my love interest. So when I went to the vid terminal to talk to her at the end of the game, she's just like, "Shepherd, Shepherd, are you there?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm here." Oh, well, you better come back because I want to get some. Really? And he's like, "I love you too," and that's it. That's the uh, end okay. Of it. So yeah, I'm trying so, to see if this thing probably, blows up like probably, Casey's yeah. talking about. What, what are what are some of the things that you liked about it? About the game? Yeah. Um, I, I liked like the moments where you got to see those oh, characters Oh yeah, you're right, again. it totally explodes. See, how could he be alive on that? What yeah. did he just... So get... it is all indoctrination, confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> so did he never even get nothing. beamed up? Was he in the rubble the whole time? I guess so. I mean, I don't know. So well, anyways... None of, this, none of this is even happening if he's not up there. Ah, yeah, we don't know. So. Who knows? Um, so you should probably pick one because we're. Showing I, I was jumping to the end <laughs> to show the explosion. Oh, okay. I had a reason why I was doing that. Okay. And then we're just, here's the we're just, we're just unlocking achievements here. That's all. We're now doing. we're talking. Yeah. You're talking about what we liked and what we didn't like for the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I loved. I, like, I had a great time playing the game, uh, and that's the whole thing for me again. Like not being super like Mass Effecty. Yeah. Like I enjoyed the journey. I had a great time. My biggest disappointment about the whole game is that you know I played it on 360 because I wanted to pick up with my save and continue to have a relationship with Garrus. Mm -hmm. And I start the game and I get him early and he's like, are we still doing this? And I'm like, yeah, we are. And we make out a bit. I'm like, dynamite. And so then I walk away and I meet, I fall in love with Specialist Trainer, who's a total whore. And I have sex with her in my shower. Like the third time I, I'm like, yes, I love this trainer girl. I'm going to keep having sex with her. So I keep going back to Garrus, waiting for him to have this conversation with me about this trainer girl. Because in Mass Effect 2, I romanced Jacob and Garrus at the same time. Mm -hmm. And eventually they both called me on it. They were like, you gotta make a choice. Like, I'm not right. gonna continue to flirt with you. And let them they did that for me in three. They made me make a choice. But or, see, well, that's what I'm talking about, though. No, it's even worse. I actually. kept going to Garrus and I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. It never happens. And then me and Trainer knock boots before we go through the thing for the final end game. And I go back to Garrus again after knocking boots with this girl, waiting for something to happen. And I open up and he's making out with Hallie. And I'm like, gosh. Come on! Yeah. Like I, I don't mind that you're cheating on me too, but I wanted something, some kind of conversation, mm -hmm. acknowledging. I guess we're moving on. You know, I'm falling in love too. Yada yada. Yeah. And it wasn't. Uh, it didn't happen. I was like, oh man. Yeah. Anyway, well, what was okay. your thing? So in mine, um, I like Jack from two. I romance her in two, but yeah. I like Liara too, and she's been she's been my main girl since Mass Effect one. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I wanted to do her, but I find Jack in the bar. I talk to her, and uh, he's she's like, well, how do you feel about me? Do you want to keep doing this? And I'm like, yeah. And I thought I could talk to Liara, and. Um, you know, she'd be okay with it, yeah. but um, in the bar scene, I'm like, yeah, and he's like, you're on vacation, so let's dance. They dance, they dance. That's all they do is dance. Yeah. And then I go back to Liara, and she's like, I know about you and Jack. <laughs> I'm like, who dance? <laughs> you know, I just said I liked her. And really? the same thing happened with me, too, uh, between yeah. Miranda and Jack. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I didn't do it friends, too. Yeah. It's cool, baby. <laughs> what I was are just uh, planning to do things later with her. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. More, more. This is the combo, right? This is the synthetic yeah, this combo. This is synthesis. Yeah, so and it is, it is a little green. Green and red. color. Green color. They're all still blowing up, killing millions of people. Maybe not here because it's synthesis. Maybe they're. Well, they know it's still it's still showed it blown up. Oh yeah, so they're killing millions of people right yeah. now. So guys, keep uh, tweeting us your questions Billion. at IGN hashtag me 3 We're gonna give away a hat, an N7 Joker's hat here in a second. And uh, then we're also going to give away a black N7 utility jacket uh, that's crazy. I don't know if they have the graphic in there, but um, I can show it to you in a little bit. But there was actually another quote from somebody at Bioware that specifically said, you're not going to get one of those A, B, C type endings. All right. And that's literally what you get. I, I mean, I think it comes down to that they, in their head, their conclusion, their endings, conclusions are involving the storylines we're talking about with Tally and Rex and all this other things, which is, I think... If this ending wasn't so unsatisfying, right, maybe yeah. that, there'd be a better case for that. But Notice the fact that so many people are pissed off that they just don't know what's going on. Now, Notice that synthesis, like the, the leaves look different because they're part yeah, machine. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then it doesn't gonna, make any sense. You're going to notice that on Joker too. Yeah, I don't know why, <laughs> yeah. um, why Flora would have, would have <laughs> yeah. been synthesized. Because there's, no, there's no one or the other anymore. One thing that I thought was uh, curious was as Joker comes out of the Normandy, um, he still has his limp. And he's still, yeah, I know, right? That's oh, what yeah. I thought he's too. Still like, he's part robot, He's man. part machine. He's going to be totally why, fine. Like, why nope, didn't... Same exact thing. Why wasn't he healed 
or upgraded or, you know, like Miranda Lawson and, and same thing with Shepard from 2 and they they, they rebuild him and they put yeah. him back together. He was well, upgraded, he has glowing eyes now. Yeah. <laughs> and like, is, I mean, not to mention, because like, yeah. When hey, I, how about my brittle bones that break like crap? Thank you, that's yeah. what I'm talking that, about. It's like, when I got this ending, I was like, oh, well, that's why he's okay. I don't understand the limp, but he's, you know, he survived that because he's a robot now. And in the other ending where, no, only life survived, he crashes the Normandy into a planet. Like, this is a guy who was worried about getting humped on by the robot and breaking his pelvis. And in the bar, yeah. I can't dance, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But no, I can crash a freaking <laughs> so, yeah. spaceship into an unknown planet. Arg. Um, so... What's that? Oh, plug the... Yeah, if you don't, oh, want, yeah. If you don't want to hear us talking about sexing up characters through these endings, uh, you know, yeah. Mass Effect 3 IG and Wiki has all these ready to Yeah, do and any of the plot points that we're talking about, if you haven't seen them, we do have them all on the IG and Wiki. And, uh, you know, you can see all the endings. We have uh, four endings up right now. Yeah, uh, like the romance scenes where Tally and Garrus get caught, which is really cool. We have that. Unless you were humping one of them and you wanted yeah. them to something like <laughs> yeah. conclusion. All right, so we're going to give out a hat uh, here you in a little see bit. see me and Jack dance? Uh, huh? Yeah, I got that on. Um, so Ryan Johal says, I like Morden's final moment when he yes. appears to Genophage. Yeah. Um, so some of the characters and some of the races got good sort of conclusions. Morden totally. was one of them. And that's what I'm saying. That it, was fitting. It's that that's what I don't like that we're talking about and we're so mad about the ending because the ending is so ambiguous and so maybe I have to buy or download DLC but like yeah Tally's ending was great Morden's is, was the first one that I teared up at because he, like I saved him in two and he's here and he goes all the way up there and he's singing his song while he goes and then there's an explosion and he dies saving these people it's like, oh my god and the, you know, the for me I got emotional when I uh, sorry to no no go, go but I got emotional when I uh, grunt I'm like because he's like, if you make this choice, we're dead. Yeah, just yeah, so yeah, you know. Right, yeah. And so of course you made off. that choice. Which and I'm like, I have to. And like, he runs off going crazy to save you. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God, he really did die. Yeah, yeah. But then he comes back and I was like, I had a moment where I'm just like, oh my God, I killed Grunt. Like, I didn't like him that much, but I don't want to <laughs> kill him. You know? Yeah. Uh, we're going to give away a hat right now. Uh, please tweet us at IGN, hashtag any three with your questions, and you can win some stuff too. The hat's going to go to Evan Wallace. Uh, he says, I would have liked to have seen the other races supported more. I I got Elcor, Volus, and Hanar support, but they, they weren't shown in the final fight. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with Rachni. That was a huge deal. Like the, right. I mean, the fact that the Rachni even came back up. I saved the queen in Mass Effect 1. Um, and That's not weird. Thing, by the way. I am. Oh, the red <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then uh, in, you you face that giant thing. Uh, whatever. What what is the the Rachni thing that the you? Queen. Okay. So and. Or uh, and but then you never <laughs> then you never see it represented in the final fight. Like you see all these fleets show up. Um, no, but, they're in the final fight. They're that number that you got at the, <laughs> at the end of the game. Uh, yeah, you just got to exactly. go to your menu to see how they're, they're doing. Casey. So, Evan Walsh, you're going to be uh, getting an N7 hat. Uh, please continue to send us your questions. We'll read them out. We'll talk about them. And uh, near the end of the show, in about 15 minutes, we're going to give away a sweet jacket. I forget. Which ending was this? This is this is uh, the blue where you control. Oh, you take control of it. Now, the control thing. Okay, now, weren't we basically told that we couldn't control the room. Yeah, no. We were the ones saying that. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're like, we're, we're telling the elusive You're crazy, man. elusive we're, man. Yeah, elusive it's man, this is insane. Don't do this. the ghost boy says I can. Side, <laughs> side with us, but then the control choice is the it's Paragon the choice. Boy. Yeah, that's why, uh, that's how, why I told How does that make any sense? I think, it, I think it all makes sense if the indoctrination is real, and I think that's why there's a different ending for that. I think it is that they're, in, say, they're in your head. Let, let, let's take the indoctrination thing out of it. Let's take the, the fact that the cutscenes are the same out of it. Think about it for a moment, though. Yeah. We've been led to believe by the narrative that control is bad yeah. and that the elusive man is a, an example of why that's bad. He's clearly been indoctrinated. He's not in control of himself. Uh, you know, the big hinging decision at the end of Mass Effect 2 was do we give the technology to him or do we destroy it? Yeah. I actually gave it to him because, I don't know, I just was And you still nice. got this ending, right? And I, yeah, I did. Yeah. Now, uh, so the elusive man uh, is, is a picture of we can't control the Reapers, but then the Paragon choice is control. How do yeah. How does yeah. that make any sense outside of all this other stuff? Why would that be the I paradigm? I mean, it doesn't. Answer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Would I, it, wouldn't some sort of, like somewhere in between like synthesis or? I mean, like, if, if we're thrown away indoctrination and ignoring the breath at the end and all that stuff, I think then I, just by the, the numbers of video games and how at the end there is these goals, the middle choice is the right choice, right? Because you're combining them both, you're bringing peace to the galaxy kind of thing. Yeah. And that's why it doesn't, that's why I think indoctrination makes so much sense now. But. I mean, it does. Then we're but spinning our wheels I, I, going back to the same argument. I really over. hope. I, uh, I, I mean, I do too. I, I want was, Bioware I, to come in April and be like, hey, so here's what's up. It was, you were right. 
you know, here's DLC. So uh, sorry, it'll be out in a year and a half, but we've yeah. been working on no, it forever. Yeah, it, was right, it was already day one. Oh, we just wanted, to, yeah. just wanted to let you guys talk for a while. So um, continue to send us your questions, guys. Again, thank you for joining us right now. We are IGN Live presents Mass Effect 3 Spoiler Cast. Tweet us at IGN, hashtag ME3. We've got about 15 minutes left. Uh, we talked a little bit about what you liked, what you didn't like. Some of the things that I really liked, um, for me, I felt like I was constantly being... Um, I was constantly encountering moments that felt tailor-made for my playthrough based mm -hmm. on decisions that I would made and I wondered, you know, at any, you know, cutscene, any decision, any sort of like look that I got from my crew, like how it would have been different if I had played different. I felt totally. like it was really knit together very, very, very well. Um, and that's, I mean, that's a huge feat. You know, there's got to be some crazy algorithms behind all of that to connect all those dots and have it happen at the same at, at, and at the right times so it felt genuine. Yeah. Um, another thing that I liked, even though I hated fighting them, I loved the Banshees. Like, they were a bane because, yeah, yeah. but any, dude, you know, anytime yeah, you, you heard scream. that, Rrr! you're just like, oh, God. <laughs> but that's the sign of, like, you know. Yeah, um, so yeah, that's definitely, I agree on that point. Sound design is phenomenal. Yes. Like, how the Reapers sound is like, you know, they come down, it's like, boom. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're intimidating, and you're like, I now, gotta get the hell out of here. Now, speaking of sound, um, as far as the music is concerned, I was kind of split on it. Like, there's there's some cool um, returns to some themes that have sort of carried over across uh, was, all three games. They didn't change it, they just reused the old Well, that's soundtrack. what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they used the Jack Wall, Sam Hulick, uh sort of um, opening theme. Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually called Vigil. That's the name of the song off of the original Mass Effect soundtrack. Um, Mass Effect 2 soundtrack was different. It was a lot of bleeps and bloops and kind of weird environmental mixes. Yeah. Um, this one, I felt like, had sort of a, a return to Mass Effect 1, but it didn't have some of the, the moments. Like, my one of my favorite songs, and this is getting ultra nerdy with the music, but there's a song on Mass Effect 2 soundtrack called Legion, and it's during the fight when you actually get Legion. Yeah. And it's so amazing and climactic. Um, I'll post it on my, my IGN blog a little bit later. If you haven't heard it, you should check it out. It's awesome. There wasn't a moment like that, per se, in this game where everything was driving, then the music kicks in, and I don't know. So Going um, to Purgatory was pretty cool, though. I like that techno song. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> and, and what about, uh, I know that there was that the, the bit of the narrative talking about like everything's so crazy, so you just need to dance with your hands going wild. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. the, oh, the yeah. scene of well, Shepard. I love, I love when, no, I love when, yeah, you ask Jack to dance or something, and she's like, everybody knows you can't dance. And I thought that was a great <laughs> yeah. line, just because every game he's such a terrible dancer, because the animation looks so bad. But there were great little moments like that. I, I mean, I loved Edie in Mass Effect 2, yeah. but then to see her getting a body, and then I kept trying to prone her. Yeah. Hey, Joker. Hey, yeah, hey, Joker, you gotta go yeah. for that. So here's a really that was good... still really creepy to me. Really? Yeah. I thought it was great because I was like, I'm, well, as soon as Edie got in that body, I'm like, I'm dumping trainer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna try to romance, and Edie wouldn't hear about it. I was like, all right, I get. So that. Uh, some good questions coming in. Uh, continue to tweet us at IGN hashtag me three. Uh, question from my IGN Sam. Uh, he says, do you guys wish that more people from two could join your squad in me three? Yeah. What do you think about the small squad size? Um, I don't know that. It allowed them to focus more on those individual characters' story. Yeah. But like my wrap up for Kasumi, who I always found to be a really weak character, just like I didn't like her DLC. Yeah. yeah. But then I encounter her in uh, three. I'm like, oh, cool! You're not dead. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. and like you just, it's just like this side quest. I and it's interesting, but then she's gone. Yeah. I know. Uh, it's I understand why they made the choices they did in the smaller cast and all that. But the pr my problem was that all my favorite people weren't available to me here. Right? I wanted Rex back. See, that's fine yeah. for you. I wanted Morden. I liked Jacob. Mm. I liked Miranda. Uh, I loved Legion. And so, like, now, not only did these people not come back, Morden and Legion die and almost make me cry. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. god damn, man. Yeah. Like, But it was cool. I just wanted... because, that, And that's why I think it's interesting that watching your endings, you used Garrison Liara, too. Mm -hmm. And I did, too. Just for, I did, too. That was my, the my go-to crew. For, for me, they were yeah. just the earliest people I had. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, I've been, I already know you guys are good. Just keep coming with me on stuff. And yeah. he's like, I'm ready. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, shouldn't you be making out with Joker? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, I like characters from one. They've been with me since the beginning. I trust yeah. them. I know it's weird to say that about a character, but no, it's I, not. I trust them, I know how they work, and how I can use their powers. Who did you yeah. use least? I l least used Ellie. Edie and James. Yeah, I mean, I legitimately didn't take anybody else out like once I had Garrus and uh, what's her face? Leo. Yeah, I don't think I used James, I didn't use Tally, Ashley, no. My, um, Ashley, my Ashley died, she got shot when during the, uh, the coup with, um, what, what's the, the guy on the council, what's his name? You shot yeah, her? Did. No, I didn't. Oh, oh, actually, maybe I did shoot her. Yeah, I did. I <laughs> shot her. Died. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, wow. No, she died, yeah. I didn't romance her, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I, 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 like, I, I should have did this in Mass Effect 1. I let, I let Caden die uh, in the first one, yeah, so yeah. I, I kept her alive. She's better looking. But um, 
You but were yeah. just like, I'm fixing my now, mistake. Now, <laughs> yeah. now tell me this. Uh, anytime you see those Renegade or Paragon trigger prompts, do you guys just, just pull them? Or do oh. you... Because so that, because that was to one of the I ones. always do. So yeah. that was one of those, and I was like, "Oops, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Ash, lol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it was I, I. I weighed those decisions. The thing I liked about Mass Effect Three is I didn't feel I was locked into Paragon or Renegade because I've been Paragon pretty much all the time. It's what I do. And in two, I'd feel guilty if I made a Renegade choice. Mm -hmm. But here, like everything's on the line. Everything's about to explode. There'd be times where I was like, "I don't, I don't like you, and I don't have time to worry about it." And, and I'd shoot. You know yeah. what I mean? I like that. I haven't played through the whole thing Renegade yet, but I am a little bit excited to do that again. Because yeah. I haven't done this one all Renegade, and uh, some people at work have, and like their faces are all scarred up, yeah, yeah, and like yeah, they yeah. look like a Terminator. <laughs> and I'm like, that's, that's awesome. so cool, I want to do that. So uh, Nick Fritz says, Nick uh, Fritz. He's, he's, he's laying down some, um, some wisdom here. He says, control equals what the elusive man wanted, mm -hmm. synthesis equals what Saren wanted, destroy equals what Shepard wanted, indoctrination is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're all kind of in agreement with them. I mean, that's what we've been talking about. The more about you talk about time. it, right? It's got to, it's what it, it just comes down makes to. Makes sense. Yeah. It's just in. The, I just. <sighs> and I think they wanted it to be like that Sopranos ending, where everything goes to black and it spurns discussion. But instead, what happened is people are just upset because maybe they missed the cues at first or aren't part of that discussion, and they're yeah. just like, "We deserve more. This ending's terrible." Well, then I mean, because then then it all does go back to like. What did we get on this disc? We got mm -hmm. the, well, we got what was promised to be the conclusion of all our choices. Yeah. But instead, we got another breadcrumb. You know what I mean? It's, it, and, it, and again, it wouldn't be bad necessarily if this Mass Effect Three ends breath, end of it. That's mm -hmm. it. There wasn't then a screen that pops up and he's like, Commander Shepard is now legendary, and oh, you get yeah. a chance to play more as him in DLC. And yeah, it's like, yeah. ah, you know what I mean? What are you doing? And then there's the scene with the old man and the yeah, little Stargazer. boy. Uh, yeah, Stargazer. Buzz Aldrin. Ugh, and man, the the so credits terrible. started going, I remember it, and I was like, Buzz Tell Aldrin me again is about Stargazer. The Shepherd, I'm like, who is that? And then yeah. this like, horribly voice acted part comes up. I'm like, oh, here it is. Oh, so, yeah. so angry. Uh, so guys, we have a little bit of time left. Please tweet us at IGN, hashtag ME3. Uh, we're going to be giving away a jacket at the end of the show. We're talking about Mass Effect 3, all the spoilers, talking about the ending, talking about what we thought, what we liked, what we didn't like. Um, a couple things that I didn't like uh, was what I felt like was a very shallow side mission system. Like, oh, you're just okay. walking by and it'll pop, it's added in my journal. I'm like, I heard somebody mention a repulsor. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking hey, about? Hey, I lost my wallet back. Mission. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> what? And the thing that to me that stood out was uh, actually a, a buddy of mine um, pointed this out that every single race seems to have lost their war Bible or their. There. This is how the we. Bible. This yeah. is how we. We take over whatever it is, and it's lost on some random planet that has no relation to any of these races. Like, why would it be in this other system? And then to boot, to make matters worse, some of them are lost on systems that aren't even open, and the journal gives you no indication on the fact that that galaxy is not even, or the system is not even yeah. accessible. Speaking of those, if you need help, go to the IGN wiki <laughs> on IGN.com. What's the easiest but way to get there? Get ah, uh, go to IGN.com slash right. wikis. Go, okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But so that that was just weird to me. Like I, I felt like the side missions in uh, one and specifically in two, like I felt like were awesome. Oh yeah, totally. Um, and that was like I wanted more of that. And, I, and like when I got to Grissom Academy, I was like, this mission's blowing my mind. Right, I love this that one. This is so yeah. awesome. Okay, that one I totally agree because that ties stuff from the book. Yeah. You yeah. know, you meet uh, the the female lead who's like in a relationship with Anderson in all the novels. Mm -hmm. We see Jack again, the students are there. People from the Overlord DLC are in that mission. Yeah, that yeah. was the coolest mission of yeah. the whole game. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that, was, that was one of my favorites. I, I, I liked it because it was like I was helping the X-Men, but whatever. Oh yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Those yeah. missions are cool too. Exactly. <laughs> the, the other, one, one of the other coolest missions was the uh, the Geth infiltration when you go into whatever it is and it looks like you're in some oh, other... Oh, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Something completely different you're shooting the virus off. Oh, of yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was weird. That you was go into the Lawnmower Man mission. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, that, that's the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, after a while, it was just you're running around shooting those things. But the narrative and the way that you—I mean, that's sort of how they totally. delivered the story totally. of how the Geth really weren't villains. Yeah. Um, I liked. I like when you're help. You run into Jacob and you're helping those people, and you get the you get the clues that he's with this girl, and you mm -hmm. can kind of investigate. That was fun. Yeah. Okay, so Caden Thomas asks us, "What was your favorite moment of the Mass Effect trilogy?" My, okay. Making Saren shoot himself. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, because like I had played through good the whole time, and I'm like, you're indoctrinated. Don't you realize it? And he's like, you're right. I am. And then he like kills himself. Speaking of which, the elusive man does the same yep. thing. He does. But for some reason in my first playthrough, my paragon wasn't high enough. Oh, yeah. So I wasn't able to get that option. Nice. My favorite one was uh, Mass Effect 2 Jacob's side mission. 
Like when we get to that planet and we know things are off kilter and I know we're building up to this conclusion with his dad to get there and see him like break down and talk to his father like that, I was like, wow. That was oh, rough. Yeah. That was yeah. a rough mission. That's and another yeah. example of a great, I mean. Mass well, Effect 2's missions were awesome, Mass Effect 2, but Jack's mission. But remember Jake was oh, like, Jack, we're getting yeah. her oh, out and talking yeah. about her past. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Mass Effect 2 was all about the side missions. I mean, the entire end game uh, hinged on how you treated the loyalty mm -hmm. missions. Mm -hmm. And Jack's mm -hmm. mission was so incredible. I yeah. mean, and all of them, I mean, some of them were a little, like what was, what's the Bounty Hunter dudes? Uh, Zaid? Oh, yeah, that was, was DLC. Oh, it was, okay, yeah, or yeah. whatever. So, um, so, but speaking of DLC, Overlord, not Shadow Broker. Shadow Broker's good. Shadow Broker's fine. Yeah. Overlord is still my favorite yes. of all time. Very Law yep. Man ish but like, when those, when you're walking along and those sound brrr, like yelling at you, that yeah. literally made me jump. Yep, me too. Yeah. Now it's amazing too how they, they weave that into the story. Like yeah. you, you meet David again. And, and, you meet his, and you meet his brother. Yeah, on the Jacob mission. Yep. You meet his brother on the Jacob mission. Yep. You meet David and Grissom Academy. Now, I had uh, had recently played Shadow, the Shadow Broker and the Overlord and the Arrival yeah. DLC. I didn't play them when they first came out, but I yeah. played them before ME3. Um, and I was waiting to see if it was going to be tied in. And uh, Liara uh, is who I brought with me on the Shadow Broker mission. And yeah. So I was waiting to see, is Liara the Shadow Broker now? And it was interesting, when she joined my crew and I went down to visit her, I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, the Shadow Broker's yeah. on the Normandy, what's going on? So just again, like Bioware's really good at tying I was so together. confused that part though, because I'd, I'd forgotten that I had uh, played Shadow Broker on PS3. Oh. So I walk in and she's telling me all this stuff, like, oh yeah, I had to go and I took out the Shadow Broker. I'm like, I did this with you, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So guys, we got three minutes left. Uh, we're gonna give away a black N7 utility jacket. It's Ooh. pretty friggin' sweet. So please uh, tweet us at IGN, hashtag ME3, with uh, any of your questions, uh, things that you want us to talk about here in the last couple moments. Cameron James tweets and he says, I was disappointed with the lack of an explanation for the origin of the Reapers. Yeah. Well, the, the kid talks about it at the end. He says, like, we made them. They were the last... So 50,000 years before this, the Reapers were apparently walking around and doing everything, and that's the representation of life from that time period. 50,000 years later, it's like humans and all these other races. That's how I explained it, all right. Yeah. 50,000 years ago, the Reapers were walking around doing things. <laughs> <laughs> Shepard's like, oh, That's right. verbatim what the kid said. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I can, that's, a, that's it's like, kind of like drunk history. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So now, one thing we haven't talked about at all is multiplayer. Like, what did you guys think of that, briefly? It's fun. Um, it didn't feel too tacked on. It feel, felt a little unnecessary that it tied yeah. into your war assets. But I enjoy playing it with people. Do you play it? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I thought it was really fun. I mean, it was very similar to Horde mode and to, um, you know, that that thing that now we're seeing in most shooters where there's, you know, whether it's Spec Ops and Call of Duty or um, what's it called in, in Halo? I forget. Um, I'm sorry. I Fire, Firebase. Oh, okay. oh, Firefight. Sure. Firefight. Fire, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. Halo 2 shirt. Oh, okay. They didn't have that back then. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I thought the multiplayer was really fun. Um, but it was really weird how the Galaxy at War system worked and how it really wasn't explained very totally, well. Totally, not at all, right? Um, yeah. Nobody gets it. We were all playing it, and you know, you're talking with the guy who wrote, you know, the entire guide for Mass Effect 3, and we're I all didn't like... write it. Sam wrote okay, it. Okay, but I you know what I mean. You did all the videos. You did yeah. the walkthroughs, and, and we're, all, we're all wondering, like, how does this exactly work? And it really wasn't until we actually got to the multiplayer parts where we saw how it played in, and we started playing for a while, and then all of a sudden our galactic readiness jumped up by, like, 25%. Yeah. And and then it goes down if you it, don't play. It's a multiplier. How it works is yeah. whatever percentage you have. So like you have 5,000 war assets. If you only have 50%, you get 2,500. If you have 100%, then 100% of whatever you've collected get, is your final readiness rating. Mm -hmm. So if that makes sense to anybody watching, that's the explanation. It's just a multiplier. Don't even worry about it. You watch the breath ending. Yeah. You, know, sweat <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know what's going to happen. You know how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, uh, we're almost at a close here. We're gonna ask uh, our final question. Um, so please tweet us at IGN, hashtag Mass Effect 3. Um, we got a couple more coming up here. Um, I think we've seen all the endings, we've talked about it. I think we're all of the opinion that we wanna see what Bioware has next. It's, oh, totally. It seems like if we were able to get to a point where indoctrination is the explanation, then maybe, is that going to- Imagine if it isn't now. Yeah, <laughs> it's like something completely yeah. different. Is, is, yeah. You know, are the fans going to riot again and there'll be a new petition? Like, we hate no. MassEffect.com? No, I don't think so. No? I think there's going to be people who are unhappy regardless, but, well, What's you know, interesting is, when, this when was the last, like, giant thing that ended that everybody loved? Seinfeld, Sopranos, Lost, not yeah. Cheers, the nobody Matrix. liked any of this stuff. Matrix, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, when's the last thing that Battle ever Star summed up? Galactica. Battlestar Galactica? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't think off the top of my head of anything that ever ended and people were like, Yes. 
I guess Lord of the Rings, but they knew that ending was coming. Slow I hated yeah. the ending of Lord Sorry. of the Rings. There, there was like eight <laughs> endings in that movie. Yeah. All right, so uh, our final uh, piece of awesome Mass Effect swag is going to go to J.C. Nolan. Uh, J.C. writes and says, I wanted to see Shepard's backstory mission. Uh, where was he Where he's promoted to commander, and I was disappointed that I didn't. What are your thoughts? That would have been really cool to see. Yeah. Like, more... More like, how did he get to be N7 and all yeah, that stuff? Yeah, be really or cool. like being eaten by a thresher mon and somehow surviving that. Or the in my story anyway. Or the yeah. the, the fight that uh, they referenced throughout the entire trilogy, What's, where everyone it, died except for him. That depends on if you pick Soul Survivor, yeah, Soul Survivor. or Earthborn. Oh, all, those okay. choices affect what people talk about. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, he everyone knows that he was in that fight and he was <laughs> the only one that survived. It would he be survived a, a coups. That's what I heard. Constantly. A coups. There you go. So it would be amazing to actually be able to play a coups. So uh, JC Nolan, congratulations! You're the winner. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to IGN Live presents Mass Effect Three Spoiler Cast. As always, please leave us all of your comments. Hit us up on Twitter. I am at Lynchtacular, at Game Over Greggy, and at Dustin L. Uh, hit us well, up. Gary. Nobody at, can spell it. Oh, name. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and hit us up at IGN. Uh, and uh, for all of your Mass Effect Three news, keep it tuned to IGN.com. <laughs>